Are you in the mood to talk about Texas country? I'm always in the mood. <laughs> the, the, the trust here is strong, so maybe don't screw me over. And yet I'm giving you more material to chop up. Why don't, why don't we get started? Welcome back to Rated Radio with your hosts, Rayburn Alexander and Shane Windham. Rayburn, what Billboard hit did we cover this week? We covered Way Too Sexy by Drake featuring Future and Young Thug. Why don't you tell us what you thought about it? Why don't you tell me what you thought Uh, about it? How how about we start there? All right. Really? Really? A right said Fred sample? Of all the samples, that's the one you stuck with? Better contributions available from Drake's newest album, but this lacks something to be desired. And I want to go ahead and point out before we start here that there were a lot of Drake songs yep. in Billboard's Hot 100. As far as Way Too Sexy goes, would you rate it? A two. A two, okay. There are lots of old song samples I dig. Use of Right Said Fred's I'm Too Sexy in a trap track, though, does nothing for me. Even the beat's only slightly better than mediocre. And I say this as someone who doesn't dismiss any of these artists out of hand. I'm actually rather partial to Future's voice, if we're being honest. But I couldn't go higher than three stars here. If you want a way better song off that album, listen to Girls Want Girls. That's all I'm going to say. Let's go talk about Texas Country now that we've lost most of these people who clicked into the episode. (laughs) Hold on to your butts. Whiskey Myers, here we come. Obviously, we are also going to be talking about Cody Jinx today. Just want to make that clear. But first, we are talking about Whiskey Myers. Oh, yeah. So, what'd you think, Rayburn? How about we get into which albums we covered, and then I'll talk about what I thought. You mean you want to do the show normally? I want to do the show normally. I want to do the show normally, yes. First album we covered was Early Morning Shakes from 2014. This was my middle pick. This was also my middle pick. Out of the 12 tracks, I gave eight fives. I gave two fives. My top track was Shelter from the Rain. My top track was Colloquy. That was my bottom track. Mm. Uh, I thought the vocals were just a bit odd in that one. And my bottom track was Hard Row to Ho. All right. I don't think I gave that one a five. Okay. So it'd be one of the few. Take the soulful punch of Outlaw Country and mix in a lot of heart. This disc rocks harder than a lot of current rock releases ever even try to. The occasional balladry just drives its winning capability all that closer to home. Think the Black Crows with a bit more twang. Not for everyone, but I love this disc. Southern rock bliss, man. Okay, here's the person that it's not for everyone. This is newer rock country. I am not a fan of the singing style. Can't figure out what style they are even trying to present on this album. And there's not a lot of depth as far as lyrics go. For me, meh. Are we talking about the same artist? Yes, we are. All right. That's cool. Mm. I I accept your take is hot. And <laughs> it is not out of our uh, normal dynamic for us to disagree. So. No, not at all. Next album we covered was Mud from 2016. This was my top album. This was also my top album. Out of the 10 tracks, I gave 10 fives. <laughs> and you, fucking weirdo. <laughs> I gave it one five. My top track was Frogman. My top track was Stone. I didn't have a bottom track. Not surprised. My bottom track was Hank. Don't look at me that way. Listeners, this is what I'm dealing with. (laughs) Don't look at me that way. (laughs) You already know. Even if you've never heard the song, you already know. Get over it. That take was something else. The Leonard Skinner vibes are strong on this outing. The hit-making structure of the songs also brings Dr. Hook to mind. The attitude on display is unmistakably Bocephus. Where the fuck has this artist been hiding up to now? Let's add a CCR reference to the mix while we're at it. Clarence Clearwater Revival? Credence. I know. I don't know the joke. <laughs> don't don't at me. I just okay. wanted to hit you really hard right now. <laughs> I know that's it's all it Credence. Was. I called it <laughs> way back in the day. I said, oh, that's Clarence Clearwater Revival. And Blue's like, Clarence? So now he calls it Clarence. Clarence Cotter, Clarence Cotter. Cl- oh, oh, shit. shit. <laughs> Uh, Just really exquisite stuff. Country with mass appeal. This has a lot more horns this go around, which is something that I definitely can appreciate. I liked the organ additions. 
And it's while it's still lacking something vocally, a much more solid album. <laughs> <laughs> you said you liked organs. I do. Last album we covered was Whiskey Myers, self-titled release, obviously, from 2019 or 2019 for the for, kids. For who? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I literally don't know. This was my bottom album. No surprise. This was also my bottom album. Out of the 14 tracks, I gave six fives. I gave one five. My top track was Glitter Ain't Gold. My top track was Bad Weather. And my bottom track was Running. And my bottom track was Little Mo Money. Little More Money. I don't know why it sounded Mo Money, Mo Money. Is that the name of the track? It's Little More Money. Oh, it actually but I says said, more. Yeah, I said Little Mo. Little Mo Money. She's clearly been listening to too much Young Thug this week. I watched Don't Be a Menace this past week, and I'm in a completely different mindset today. So this album, <laughs> if we can talk about this yes, album. Yes, we can. It starts out feeling like a party album, then quickly turns into a mixed bag of lyrical themes and musical styles, the bulk of which I'm not in love with. There are some goods here, nothing's bad, but mostly it left me thinking this is what you'd get if the Black Keys produced a country disc. This is also more in line with what I know Texas country to be, a somewhat lukewarm melding pot of country stereotypes. I still really dig this group, though. Don't get it twisted. Okay, for me, as I try to calm my eye down after the Black Keys comment. It's accurate. Yeah. It's uh, accurate. Okay. A lot more shout singing this go around. Vocals remind me a lot of, get ready for it, Shane, Kid Rock. Okay, it's fair. A little bit more soul this, this time. Southern so. rock, sort of. Yeah. So this music makes me feel like the best of classic country and classic rock live on, which is a really good feeling for me. Even <laughs> For you. I I get so tired of what exists. Like, I love classic country and classic rock, but there's only so many times you can listen to yeah. those old tracks. I think it goes to say that they're not making music like that anymore. Yeah. So you're only left to listen to what's existing al already. But my only takeaway for uh, how the artist could be most successful in the future would be to stick to a single sound on each album. I really loved that about Mud. It was very thematic, and that, that kept me understanding every song you know mm -hmm. i wasn't like i was having to I don't, something about beck you know i'm There's, not i'm not gonna disagree with you i'm very surprised that your middle top and bottom were the exact same as mine so we have we're meeting in the middle somewhere kind of yeah in uh, some alternate reality we agree but this ain't the one no junior. it isn't <laughs> i sent mud to your dad and also to codes which codes knew it already because of course he did i think if you're the type who digs that soulful classic rock mm -hmm. southern country sort of vibe this group is going to appeal to you greatly a couple of things that i want to say about whiskey myers they are a part of the texas red dirt country scene they hail from palestine texas palestine palestine i'm kidding shut up stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they're originally known as lucky southern and they opened for the eli young band in 2007 they appeared in four episodes of yellowstone which is a tv series that they're actually filming right now in the stockyards at my old building that I used to work at. Aren't you just a special little snowflake in the world? I am. I'm so special. I mean, I don't I don't work there anymore, but I used to work there. So anyway. By the way, we hear really great things about Yellowstone. I've yet to watch the show, but we hear extremely good yes. things. So perfect fit for this band as far as I'm concerned, if it holds up. This artist has less than 2 million monthly listeners on Spotify, and that's just nuts. If you're a Sturgill Simpson fan, this group should absolutely be on your radar. Okay. Don't give me those eyes. <laughs> not you're, a bad artist. You're a Stapleton person uh, who okay, is... Okay, do not, do not come at me, dude. You're... You're trying to love Sturgill Simpson. Trying. Uh, okay. All right. I'm going to make you eat those fucking words <laughs> in just a little bit. Are we ready to take a break? I'm ready. All right. Before we get into the meat of our normal breaks, something I keep forgetting to mention, Cameo exists out there. You can go and give celebrities money and they'll make videos for people, you know, for their birthdays or for events. And you can also do it as a business. I'm not trying to plug Cameo. What I'm trying to do here in all honesty and sincerity is thank William Hung for his message that my co-host was nice enough to, <laughs> to buy me for my birthday. You know, and you may hear that name and understandably he, he's not 
the greatest voice out there or anything. I I've, think he, he kind of embraces himself as the meme as far as music goes, but I love his energy. I love his attitude. I'm really glad that uh, someone picked up on him enough to know that there was something in the way of star potential there. Mm-hmm. Not like the greatest musician in the history of the world or anything like that. I just, I like his messaging. He's so a motivational speaker him. now. Yep. So if you know Shane, you know the reason why I chose William Hung. But the best thing about him is he acknowledges what he is and he's okay with that. Exactly. So, I mean, those are the kinds of artists that I love. And I think he's a great fit for motivational speaker, or what he's doing. Anyway, didn't mean to ramble forever, but thank you, William. I appreciated it. Are we ready to talk about what our top 10 list w- was this week? Yeah, what was it? Top 10 new obsession songs. And that was my list, right? Yes, it was. Okay. I was here for this list. You liked it? I did. Me too. I did. I had a lot of fun with it. All right, my pick is Chinatown by Bleachers, featuring Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> what are you giving me that look for? You'll see. Okay. Well, uh, recently I teased in a past episode that I was going to be going on a trip that my lovely co-workers blessed me with. And I actually heard this song while I was on my trip. I went to New Jersey and to New York, to one specific place in New York, but I went to Chinatown and Little Italy. So anyway, I'm there. I'm having a wonderful time. Like I'm looking around and I am realizing that I'm probably never going to experience moments like these again. You know, sitting in Little Italy, eating cannolis from the Cannoli King at Cafe Palermo. And, you know, there's this guy, Sal, that's sitting there singing Frank Sinatra on the street, you know, and I'm just like engulfed in this moment. This song I listened to. And then. Shut up. This is my story time. I was listening to the song on the plane back home, and I had this overwhelming feeling. I had been missing Blue this entire time. We hadn't had this much time apart since the early stages of our relationship. And I was missing him the entire time, but still having a wonderful time on this trip. And I remember being on the plane, listening to the song, looking out my window in a sea of clouds, and just being overwhelmed with this emotion of, I get to see him. I'm I'm going to, you know, I just, I missed him. And I haven't felt like I missed him that much in such a long time. And it just, it gave me a feeling of reassurance of our relationship and the love that I have for him. To your comment, just kind of further cements something that I think, which is if you feel like things are stale or you want some sort of spark back for whatever, you know, if you're just looking to feel a little something different in your relationship. Mm-hmm. Just leave for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fucked up, but. It, I mean, it's true. A- absence makes the heart grow fonder. And it really, really did. And I was just, I was, it was like a hug. It was like the warmest of hugs. Hearing this song, feeling this way. And I just, I knew that I had made wonderful choices to lead me to this moment and to feel this way. Word. So anyway. So I really like your song. I do. Yeah. I listen to it because everything I've heard by the bleachers up to now, I've really enjoyed anyway. Never taken the deep dive. And surprisingly enough, completely unplanned here, my song for story pick today is also by the bleachers. No fucking way. <laughs> it's, it's called Don't Take the Money. Uh, this song brings my wife to mind. Lasting relationships are all about some hard-headed motherfuckers continually choosing to stick it out, hopefully finding new ways to fall in love with each other. And I don't always make that easy. Uh, We used to work all week and party all weekend. Before that, we'd even party during the week, falling into each other's young arms when the day could hold no more magic. These days, we're lucky to get 30 minutes alone to converse with each other. Goddamn kids. Uh, (laughs) But when those ever more elusive stars manage to align now, this song sounds exactly how she leaves me feeling inside for sticking with her. I see a million things when I look at that woman, but mostly it's this aging image of that lioness she was, driving with the windows down, sunglasses and smile on her face, looking at me like she just won the lottery. Me. (laughs) <laughs> what the fuck i uh, sure hope we keep making it work and get back some of that adventurous existence we used to live something else i should mention is we only tell one story now so if you want our full playlist you can find them on spotify check our social media where you can just see the pictures and song lists and all that crap mm-hmm. next week's song list is just a continuation from this song list 
I actually had 40 songs picked for this playlist. That's how into the new Obsession songs I was. Mm -hmm. And the list you picked just fit very nicely. So okay. I just took 10 songs from what I had put together, and that's next week. All right. Well, as far as our stories, what a bunch of fucking sad saps we are about our relationships. I say sad. It's probably more hopeful and full of love, but... I think it speaks to this group. And I look forward to them ever coming up at some point. So the bleachers apparently really fucking great. And don't sleep on them. Yes, don't. <laughs> okay. Nobody understands that joke, but you will in the future. Thank you for attending our TED Talk. Let's go talk about Cody Jinx. So Cody Jinx is a, a thing that exists, and mm -hmm. that's going to do it for this week. Thank you for listening to another episode. Hey, Hit up our okay. hey, hey now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Calm down. How dare you? He liked his own post on our page, Shane. Show that man some goddamn respect. That's what happens when your hashtags are targeted now. Yeah. Look at us. We're evolving. She was super stoked. I got a screenshot. Look who liked it. Go to hell. <laughs> Look who liked it. It's the little thing, Shane. It's the little thing. <laughs> so the first album we covered by Cody Jinx is I'm Not the Devil from 2016. This was my top album. This was my bottom album. Out here, of the- Here we go. Oh, you expect this one to be- a, Here we go. Out of the 13 tracks, I gave four fives. I gave one five. My top track was The Way I Am. My top track was Gray. And my bottom track was Chase That Song. And my bottom track was Church at Gaylor Creek. This one challenged me. The instrumentation is calm, dance hall country with a heavy, beautiful dose of slide guitar. Cody's voice is pleasant. His melodies are catchy. His lyrics are relatable, if a bit too trite at times. Problem for me is that some of the music feels like musicians going through expected motions, and the hooks are not as punchy as I like. I find this spin equal parts top-notch and forgettable. For me, this is country reminiscent of the 90s country that I love so much. Better than bro country sounds of today. Quicker paced and good time vibes are to be had with this one. And then there's that opinion, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just, it's my bottom. Uh, I'm just kidding. This... It gets better. Trust me. So the next album was Lifers from 2018. This was my middle pick. This is my top album. Out of the 11 tracks, I gave two fives. I gave three fives. My top track was Colorado. My top track was Stranger. And my bottom track was Head Case. My bottom track was Can't Quit Enough. Everything I said about the previous album, but with less slide guitar and more religion. I'm also noticing something's occasionally off in his vocal delivery. Uh, it's like someone combined lots of country's biggest names, but it rarely reaches the same level of greatness as those original artists. A solid country album, just not among my favorites. I love the album title. Well, for me, this album experiments more with older steel guitar sounds. Sounds a little Chris Isaac instrumental inspired, leaning heavily on the countryside. Very Jace Everett sounding, or get ready for this, Sturgill Simpson. This artist was Sturgill Simpson comparisons for me. So eat it. Take it back. All right. We're going to have to poll the community here mm, we of will. listeners. So if you're listening and you've heard Whiskey Myers and then you hear some Cody Jinx, please at us or me or Rayburn. Rayburn. And <laughs> let us know which one you would more closely compare to Sturgill Simpson. The last album we covered was After the Fire from 2019. This was my bottom album. This was my middle album. Out of the 10 tracks, I gave two fives. I gave one five. My top track was Dreamed with One. Same. We agreed on something we this did. week. How about that? My bottom track was Think Like You Think. My bottom track was Tone Deaf Boogie. The sound here is more intimate, but also oversaturated with mild distortion that kicks too hard in the more energetic moments. Mostly the lyrics are an improvement over the other albums. This feels more unique than an imitation of other artists, but it's uneven and fully unpredictable from track to track. For every great moment, there's one which dulls me or sounds off. Still, this is a good showcase for his styles and an argument for his ability to be somewhat original. Religious people will like this more than I do. I'll pray for you, Shane. I sound very negative. <laughs> You're just now realizing this? Now, it's been going through my head. I just wanted to get through the albums first. I sound very negative on this artist, and that's not my intention. You gave fives. Yeah. You gave some fives. I, I think on 
Just about every one you gave more fives than me. And a, a lot of the rest of this was fours. So, time out. I would like to talk about this album, if you don't mind. Talk about this album, please. This album, for me, was less experimental, more classic and somber, slow-paced for the most part of it. Now you may talk. Look what I can do. Shut up. The music makes me feel like I live in a cookie-cutter home, but have a kick-ass yard. Make of that what you okay. will. Okay. Um, this artist is from Fort Worth, Texas. So again, two Texas artists going head to head. Originally started out as the singer of a thrash metal band named Unchecked Aggression. He started doing country in 2005. He wanted to get back to his roots to what he grew up with. So he ended up switching from the thrash metal to country. He toured and opened for Sturgill Simpson in 2015. Don't look all content over there like that matters. Okay. Just saying, I mean. Think about some of the people that tour together. The facts speak for themselves. No, they don't. Uh, To be most successful in the future, I think adding a female voice to this mix would be great. This is not country built for the masses, but will have great appeal for a specific sect of country's existing fan base. Almost all of it is easily listenable, but I won't be obsessing over it. Happy I got some gems out of the listen. In any case, I can't say enough good things about the slide guitar, by the way. It's been a long time since I heard that much slide guitar, and it's just brilliant. You mentioned that you wanted to hear a female vocalist with Cody Jinks. Whiskey Myers actually did have a, have a female vocalist. How did you feel about that addition with Whiskey Myers? I liked it. I think it almost always brings something to the table See. where you have a mix of the vocals. The thing is, it would not be as necessary with Whiskey Myers as I feel like it would be with Cody Jinx. Okay. This is, there's something about that Texas country thing that for me feels mild. Like if I'm having wings and I've got a mild sauce on them, you know I want a little bit more spice. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Okay. Okay. I think a lot of the songwriting was great. Obviously, Whiskey Myers won for me. What is your takeaway here? Cody Jinx won for me. And as far as the female vocalist on Whiskey Myers, I actually found it to be a little not necessary. So maybe that was my hang up. I don't know. I didn't hate Whiskey Myers. Cody Jinx just came out on top just a little bit more. So and I believe it was the Lifers album, which put him over the edge for me. And I want to go ahead and apologize to my Aunt Jennifer, who recommended this artist. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. I listened and listened and listened in hopes of loving it. Mm -hmm. I only loved some of it. I definitely think this person has great potential, and I hope we find more of that in the future. Jennifer, if you're looking for like a replacement, I'm available, so I can be your niece. You don't want her. (laughs) (laughs) She gets old faster than I do. That's impossible. So having said everything we needed to about the artist, let's go ahead and get our draw for next week out of the way. All right. Are you going to let me draw or are you going to... Do you... No, just draw. Let me do it. Do You just do it. Oh, that sounds full. Yes. It's, <laughs> I made sure everybody was in there. It's it's quite packed now. Hmm. So who is it, Shane? It's a recommendation from your sister-in-law, future sister-in-law. How do I... I, I call her my sister-in-law. Okay. Samantha. Yes, Samantha. You want to take Jonas. a shot in the dark as to what I pulled out of that oh, jar? God. You want to talk about a a mixed bag with that one. It could be anything from R&B to older country to boy bands to... To kids music. Kids music. Rappy? It's it's not kids music. Okay. It's it's Hanson. Okay. All right. I I have no idea. Uh, And I have Hanson paired up against Justin Bieber. I'm going to refrain from commenting and you'll just have to tune in next week. Hanson and Justin Bieber. He looks very excited. Well, that's going to do it for this week. Hit up our playlist on Spotify, visit our merch shop, share our show with your friends. Come find us on social media to let us know what you think. And until next time, fill your world with music. And remember, when you want to find tomorrow, you can find it with us. Music.